Now this might be an unpopular opinion, but most of the hormone balancing recipes and supplements that you see online are a scam. It's a trendy concept that people are using to try and sell you something. There are so many different hormones in the body, all with their own unique functions. So how can one recipe, one pill or one food possibly balance them all? If we haven't met before, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian and I will always be fully transparent with you on this channel. As much as I believe in the power of nutrition, I don't offer false promises. So in today's video, I'm going to share some realistic nutritional strategies that can 100% support your hormones. We're gonna talk about what you can do, what you should not do, and when you might need something beyond just food. Because hormonal imbalances are very serious, they can lead to issues like diabetes, weight gain, and even infertility. And don't get me wrong, food and lifestyle changes, and in some situations, certain supplements can really help, but they are not always the miracle cure that you may be led to believe. So for women, during your reproductive years, looking at your cycle is a really good way to tell if your hormones are out of whack. Infertility, migraines, or period problems like PMS, very heavy periods, or missing, or irregular periods. These can all be signs that your hormones are out of balance. Now, if you're not a woman or you're not in the reproductive years, things to look out for would be sudden big changes in energy levels or in your weight, and even in the texture of your skin or your hair. But the best way to know for sure is to go to your doctor and get a blood test done first. Don't start blindly taking a supplement or religiously following a hormone balancing regime without knowing what's wrong and how to fix it. Because hormone imbalances are very specific to the individual and there's not a one size fits all approach to fix them. Now I'm not trying to shoot myself in the foot completely. Diet can play a really big role when it comes to your hormones because what we eat affects how they're produced and how they talk to each other. And in particular, our hormones love healthy fats like olive oils, avocados, nuts and seeds. They also love fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D and getting in lots of fiber from your fruits and veggies and good quality proteins to help in their production. And in contrast, pesticides, artificial sweeteners and alcohol can all have a negative impact on your hormones. But you also need to be simply just eating enough. You need enough calories and women's bodies in particular are very sensitive to scarcity because your body doesn't know the difference about whether or not you're experiencing a famine or that you're trying to intentionally starve yourself. So it will shut off your menstrual cycle because it's trying to survive and reproduction isn't essential to surviving. It will prioritize things like keeping your heart beating and keeping your brain functioning. Now let's start by looking at some of the hormones that can really strongly impact your weight and your metabolism. Now I talked about this in my video where I went over seven reasons why you may not be losing weight. And one of these was having issues with your thyroid hormones. Because when thyroid hormones are either too high or too low, it can cause fatigue, hair loss, unintentional weight gain or weight loss, and even depression. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really does help support my channel. And if you're looking for healthy, high protein recipe ideas, I'd recommend following me over on Instagram. Now, insulin is another hormone that takes sugar from the blood and transports it into cells where it can be used. And it's also responsible for storing extra carbohydrates as fat. But please note that I said extra here because online insulin has a name now where it's called the fat storage hormone. And while although yes, it may be true that it can help your body store energy reserves, the really important thing not to miss out here is that it's extra. If you're eating extra calories, it will store them as fat. It doesn't just automatically make you gain weight. And then we also have leptin and ghrelin, which are our hunger and our fullness hormones. These impact how full or how hungry you are on a given day. So of course, this is gonna impact how much you eat, which will in turn impact your weight. Then when it comes to the reproductive system, we have estrogen and testosterone. But beyond their role as sex hormones, many people don't realize that estrogen actually plays a role in keeping your cholesterol levels in check. And it's really important for your bone health too. Similarly, testosterone is really important for muscle mass and bone density in both men and women. Then we have the stress hormone called cortisol, which can increase your blood pressure and your heart rate. 
and some cortisol is completely fine. In fact, it's necessary, otherwise none of us would be getting out of bed in the morning. But too much is not good for your health. And then we also have adrenaline, which is our fight or flight hormone. And of course we have melatonin, our sleep inducing hormone. So all of these hormones are extremely powerful. And as I'll teach you today, diet can play a role in supporting them. But imbalances need to be taken seriously. They can leave you feeling fatigued, low mood, and with issues with your weight. That can all be really damaging to both your physical and your mental health. And for some of these issues like thyroid, you may need to go on medication. Or for PCOS, there's specific supplements that can help. It's not generic. And this is why you need to go beyond diet and have your hormones checked and link in with your doctor and get individualized advice for you. But we're gonna explore the nutritional tactics that we can use to improve our hormonal health. So without further ado, here are nine hormone balancing foods that you can add to your plate. Now the first one that we have are cruciferous vegetables. These can help to remove excess estrogen from the body by helping our liver metabolize estrogen in a healthy and efficient way. They're also high in fiber and antioxidants, which is just generally beneficial for your overall health. Now examples of cruciferous vegetables are things like your Brussels sprouts, your cauliflower, your bok choy, cabbage, collard greens, arugula, kale, and radish. Some of these might seem boring, but it just takes a little bit of creativity. For example, I love roasted cauliflower right now. It's so much better than your boring boiled or steamed veg. All it takes is 25 minutes in the oven at 425 degrees Celsius. Sprinkle on some salt and pepper and some seasonings and it's crispy and delicious. Or you could try Parmesan roasted broccoli. Again, there's different ways to just mix this up. Now foods high in magnesium are also on the list here because magnesium is important for the health of your thyroid, which secretes the hormones important for metabolism. And getting enough magnesium also helps with sleep. Now my two favorite foods for getting in your magnesium are pumpkin seeds and chia seeds. They're excellent sources, but we can get magnesium from a lot of different foods. Spinach, avocado, tofu, and, and almonds and edamame are a good shout too. Now again, for the health of your thyroid, selenium is also really important. And I have one easy hack here. All you need to do is take two to three Brazil nuts every single day, and this will give you your daily selenium needs. Now you don't need to go overboard, two to three is great, more is not always necessarily better. So what I'm doing lately to get very practical is I usually have overnight oats for breakfast, and I'll always add my chopped up Brazil nuts and two to three tablespoons of pumpkin seeds. And I'm starting my day in an excellent way. Now our hormones love, absolutely love fats. They are one of the main building blocks of hormones. And another reason they can be hormone balancing is they are anti-inflammatory. And when there is less inflammation in the body, it's easier for the body to produce hormones. So some of the best sources here are oily fish. And this is a really good one in terms of fertility. An oily fish is typically your colored fish. So your salmon, your mackerel, your fresh tuna and your sardines. And these are a good source of omega-3 fats which are really important for our heart and brain health. Then we have olive oil, which is high in oleic acid, which is an omega-9. And again, it's anti-inflammatory and extremely versatile. Avocado oil is another really useful one that people are less familiar with, but it's quite neutral tasting in comparison to olive oil, so it works well in baked goods. It also has a very high smoke point, so it's a handy one to grab if you're cooking at very high temperatures. Then nuts and seeds and nut butters are excellent sources of fat. So sprinkling seeds and nuts on different meals throughout the day or having them as a snack. These are really good hormone balancing foods to be including. Now avocados are another really amazing healthy fat and just an overall really good food. But many people don't associate avocados with fiber and they're actually a very good source of fiber and magnesium as mentioned earlier. But they are loaded with this plant sterol called beta-cetosterol. And it is suggested that this can influence estrogen and progesterone, the two hormones that are important for regulating ovulation and the menstrual cycle. So they're a really good one to include in a meal and be full for the next few hours. And I can really attest for this. Whenever I have avocados at breakfast or at lunch, I definitely feel fuller than usual. Now, high quality protein foods are also really important as these can help with balancing blood sugar levels and they also help with preserving your muscle mass. And when I say high quality, what I mean is just less of those processed sausages and chicken nuggets, that kind of stuff. But protein is really important because the essential amino acids are building blocks for peptide hormones. And peptide hormones are vital for our stress response, our energy levels, and appetite control. As a rule of thumb for most people, consuming around 25 to 30 grams of protein at most meals is a good target. But if you want to get into the specifics of how much protein you should be eating, tailored for you, you can watch this video here. 
And for the best result, I would recommend combining a mixture of plant proteins and animal proteins, unless of course you're a vegetarian. But this way you're gonna be getting in a whole mixture of nutrients. You're gonna be getting some iron from the animal proteins and some fiber from the plant proteins. Now eating a diet that's high in fiber can also help excrete excess hormones from the body. Lignans in particular, which are abundant in flax seeds or linseeds, these can facilitate with binding and removal of unbound active estrogens in the body. So choosing more complex carbs like your whole grains over your white bread and your white pasta is always a good shout. Many people are scared of carbs because of this online issue with people being scared of insulin and blood sugar levels. But if choosing well, they can help with your blood sugar control and they can also help lower elevated cortisol levels. So you want to be aiming for around 25 to 30 grams of fiber every single day. So your whole grains, but also your fruits, your vegetables, your nuts, your seeds, and your beans and your pulses are excellent sources too. I have a free fiber guide, which I'll leave linked in the description box below. I also have a free protein guide, so I'll link that too. Now I also recommend to add in plenty of herbs and spices. We often forget about these, but these are nutrient powerhouses too. So try to find a way to add these in at every single meal. And they add a lot of taste too. So for breakfast, I try to add cinnamon or nutmeg, something along those lines into my porridge. And for lunch, I'll try to have some herbs. And then for my dinner, I'll try to add in a few different spices, whether I'm making a stir fry or a sheet pan or whatever I'm trying to throw together that evening. But there's always creative ways to start adding in herbs and spices into your meals and you might surprise yourself and find that you really like them. Now, I bet you didn't know this, but the gut is the largest endocrine organ in the body, and it synthesizes and secretes more than 20 hormones that play a role in appetite, satiety, and metabolism. So whatever we can do to support our gut health is another big, big win. But a healthy gut will also lead to better digestion, which leads to the absorption of nutrients needed for hormone balance. I'm actually gonna do a full video on gut health, so make sure you're subscribed for that one. But in general, eating lots of different plants and having lots of variety in your diet is the best thing that you can do for your gut. Then you can add some fermented foods that are high in probiotics. Examples of these would be things like your live yogurts, your kefir, your kimchi, your kombucha, your miso, and even your cottage cheese, if chosen right. Not all cottage cheese has live cultures, so check the label. So look for live active cultures when choosing these. Then adding lots of prebiotic foods to your diet is another good tip. And prebiotic foods are food for the bacteria. Some of the best ones are onions and garlic, asparagus, bananas, leeks, cabbage, and oats. Now, lastly, it's not just about specific foods. It's about the overall pattern of your dietary habits. And in general, the Western diet is high in added sugars and high in processed foods and high in saturated fat. And these can lead to high estrogen levels. And research has shown that following a dietary pattern that is similar to the Mediterranean, this can improve estrogen levels and reduce your risk of breast cancer. And the Mediterranean diet really is loaded with hormones hormone balancing foods, like your oily fish, your nuts, your seeds, and lots of fruits and vegetables and olive oil. Now, many pesticides act as hormone disruptors, meaning that they either mimic hormones in your body or they affect the actions of your own hormones. And particularly when we're looking at fertility, there is evidence to suggest minimizing your exposure to pesticides. But I will be honest, there is a lot to unpack here. So if there is interest, let me know in the comments and I can look to making a full video on this topic. Now we also want to consume fewer highly processed foods, less added sugar and less fried foods. And I think this is a pretty obvious one in terms of general health too. Now alcohol also interferes with several hormonal processes from blood sugar control to estrogen metabolism. And according to the National Cancer Institute, all types of alcohol are associated with an increased risk of breast cancer, as well as other cancers. So always try to stick to the recommended intakes for alcohol. And if you don't drink, don't start. Now, another thing to avoid in some scenarios is for women in particular, exercising first thing in the morning fastest. Because when we wake up, our cortisol levels are naturally at their highest and they gradually start to decline as the day goes on. But for some women, combining the high cortisol levels from just waking up and the stress from the exercise, it can be a little bit too much for your body. And everyone is a little bit unique to this. Some people are more sensitive than others. But if you try to exercise first thing and you also don't have any breakfast, those cortisol levels are gonna stay pretty high. Whereas if you were to have a carbohydrate snack or a proper breakfast, this would help bring down those cortisol levels first. 
giving your body a little bit more energy for exercise and it would be less overall stress in the body. And this is something I do a lot with clients that are struggling to get their periods back. You may have to move exercise to later in the day or just make sure that you're not doing it on an empty stomach. And I know that's hard if you're trying to go for a run at 6 a.m. to try and eat a snack before then. So there might need to be a little bit of a jiggle around of the routine, but this can really help. Now, in addition to a healthy diet, we need to be getting enough sleep and we need to be keeping stress levels low. And regular exercise, these are all crucial for healthy hormones. And you really can't have one without the other. The most perfect diet in the world is no good if you're not sleeping well and you're stressed all the time and you're not able to exercise. So there we have it. If you have any questions or you'd like me to expand on any particular topic in more detail in a future video, just let me know in the comments below and I would be happy to do this. And if you enjoyed this video, you definitely would enjoy the video about the reasons why you may not be able to lose weight. I'll leave it linked somewhere here. But as always, thank you very much. And please give my video a like because it really does actually make my video do a lot better. I thank you very much for watching. I will see you again next week.